Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to my channel Tech with Daddy which is all about integrating cheap IoT devices with your favorite home automation ecosystem. My videos are all about using platforms like Hoops or Homebridge to integrate these cheap IoT devices with HomeKit. The whole idea is to get the same rich home automation experience by spending less. You have seen this in my past videos. If you haven't, please do and while doing so, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Before I go into this video, one of the things I really want to correct from my past video is the pronunciation. It's pie hole and not pee hole. Once again, it's not pee hole, it's pie hole. Again, this is just for giggle's sake. Now, continuing on my journey to integrate non-certified IoT devices with Apple HomeKit, in today's video, we will integrate the Samsung SmartThings Hub with it and bring along the Zigbee and ZB devices that you've already loaded into your SmartThings hub. One of the good things uh, is having this hub is you can uh, use device handlers, which is a virtual representation of your physical devices, and also use smart apps to enhance your home automation. Your only limitation is your imagination and your pockets as well. The only downside of this integration is that you will always need an active internet connection. Without it, the devices will appear as unavailable in the home kit. For all of this to work, we will need one, a smart things hub, obviously. Two, your preferred smart uh, device. In my case, I'm using an Android uh, to do the demonstration. Three, uh, your preferred home automation platform. In my case, I'm using Hoops, but the process is still is the same for Homebridge. For the installation, we will break it down into three parts so that you can uh, navigate directly to them just in case you want to uh, jump any of the uh, steps. I'll leave the timestamps in the description. Uh, the three parts are one, the smart hub configuration, two, the smart device uh, configuration, three, the plugin configuration, okay? I'll not go uh, into depth into the functionality of the smart things hub. I'll just focus on the integration part, okay? So let's not waste time, like I always say, and let's jump into the integration. So basically when you do your uh, SmartThings uh, hub configuration, you can do it in two ways, the manual install or the GitHub integration. My suggestion is to always use the GitHub integration, being that you can always update uh, the plugin or the smart app uh, based on whenever the developer pushes out one. So it happens automatically. If you go through the manual install way, you'll have to update it by what it says, right? Uh, manually. Let me get into my smart things hub. Once you have logged in, the one of the first things you want to do is select your hub. So my locations. And then I'm going to go into my smart apps. And we see over here currently there is none installed. So to do, let's first click on plus new smart app. So there are two ways. Uh, the first way is uh, we're going to do it from from code, which is the manual way. Okay, let me go back to the tutorial, and I have left the link over here. Control A. Control C, I'm going to paste the code over here and I'm going to click on create. Once it's created, we go into app settings. We are going to enable the authentication and we're going to say update. And once we go back to the smart, smart apps, it says over here unpublished. So if you click on it, all you got to do is say publish for me. So in this, so once doing that, we've already seen that the smart app is already installed in the hub. Okay, so this is the manual way. What I'm going to do is I'm going to delete it and go into the GitHub integration. 
So let's enable GitHub. authorize application it will basically take you to your github if it's not done previously in my case i've done it so uh, it didn't uh, open another web page and we're going to go into settings we're going to say add new repository we're going to go to the tutorial and we're just going to copy paste two values And the third one, we're going to leave it as master. So we're going to hit save. And we're going to click on update from repo. Click on Homebridge Smart Things version 2. And it's going to show a new only in GitHub. So you're going to click on it. We are going to. Say click on publish and execute update. So once that's done, it clearly shows that it's connected with the GitHub repository and it's installed, but we need to enable the authentication. So let's click on the smart app, go to app settings. We're going to enable Say update. Smart apps. So this is what we have already installed. Uh, before we move into the next step of the uh, smart device configuration, I just want to show quickly what all devices I have. I've got my Bose, uh, uh, Sonoff Zigbee uh, switch, and my Samsung smart TV that runs on Tizen. So I've got these three devices uh, over here. Alrighty, so we just finished the first part and now we are going to go into the second part using my uh, Android device. So let's open up the SmartThings app. I'm using the classic uh, app for this uh, demonstration. Uh, off lately, uh, SmartThings has been sending a communication uh, to their users to, you, to move to the new uh, SmartThings app for an enhanced experience. But apparently this smart app uh, to migrate with HomeKit has been having issues. So I've stuck to the uh, classic app. So let's go to marketplace. Tap on smart apps. My apps. Let's click on HomeBridge. So you can de define device types. So Defining them is to give them uh, what they really uh, real functionality is. So I'm going to tap on lampshade, Bose and TV as, as, as lights, but I can also enable them as switches. So you can only use them as on and off. Remember, you're not taking any of the other uh, configuration settings to HomeKit. It just recognizes as these two devices as a switch. So I've got a lampshade and I'm going to uh, define it as a light. I don't have any garage doors, speakers, fans, a thermostat. So you, these are all the other alternative devices. You can define them within this tab. I'm going to tap on save. Uh, then all other devices. So I'm going to select them. I've got and I'm going to define my Bose and my Samsung TV as a switch. So I'm going to tap on switches. So they'll appear as an on and off switch. Done. I'm going to tap on save. Uh, do tap on save because if you go back, you go back, uh, you are taking yourself back into the initial screen. So save. If you have any virtual devices. Now, this is a very interesting thing. Uh, allow smart home monitor control. So if you already have any of your smart home uh, uh, monitor controls uh, in smart in the SmartThings hub, you can transfer them uh, to HomeKit and it uh, activates your security protocol. So there is a switch. So switch that you can arm your house as away, uh, home and uh, night. So I'm going to leave it enabled. If you want, you can disable it. And if you're uh, uh, on the home hoops or home bridge platform, there's already a security plugin. It's up to you if you want to use the, the one that you already have, or you can use the security plugin 
to uh, have a detailed controlled uh, configuration. I'm not going to change anything my temperature Celsius. Now this part where we render the platform data for homebridge config.json. Here we're going to have the app URL, the app token and the link. So within over here in the next uh, part of the plugin configuration, we're going to capture some information from here. Once you're all done, you can label it. So I'm just going to leave it as homebridge and I'm going to tap on save. And if I'm going to go to my automation and under smart apps, I've already seen my home bridge already installed and configured. Okay, so we are done with the second part. So now the third part, we are going to configure the plugin in your preferred home automation platform. In my case is Hoops. The process is the same for home bridge. Okay. So let's log into the platform. Go to plugins, search, and click on install. So while it's installing, what we can do is go into the Smart Things Classic app, go into automation, tap on home bridge and we're going to go down to render the platform data for home bridge config .json. in this section we're going to get all of the information for the app url app id app token and if you want you can put in your community name and uh, the other information so i'm going to click on this i'm just going to Copy. But since I'm on Android, I'm just going to look for doc. Just open anyone. It's going to paste them over here. Okay, so I've pasted the information over here. And uh, let's go on to our desktop and see if we can if it appears over there. So I'm going to open up the docs and the untitled document the code is over here so uh, what we're going to what we're going to look for first in the platform is the app url so we're going to go over here and we're just going to copy the app url save app id we're going to copy the app id And the last one is the app token. I'm going to copy the app token. If you want, you can uh, put in your community username. If you have a smart things account uh, with the community, you can put the direct port. In my case, uh, my hoops is at uh, 8081. So I'm just going to change it. Uh, if you're on home bridge, uh, normally it's on 8080. And I'm just going to define my temperature units as Celsius and I'm going to save the plugin and I'm going to go into my Apple home app let's give it a couple of seconds for it to appear so you see see that we've got the TV already over here so this is the Samsung TV it is as an on and off switch we have the lampshade, so I can turn it on and off, is the light, as well as we've got the Bose, the sound touch system as on and off as well. And uh, like I said, uh, we also got the smart home monitor uh, imported from SmartThings Hub, so you can, um, Activate your security alarm straight from home kit uh, in, to your uh, smart things hub so you can away night off and it also gives you a notification if You enable it. So what if you want to remove these switches that you had uh, just imported very simple go into the smart things uh, classic, classic app 
automation tap on the smart app and go into the select your devices switches disable them say done say save next save now give it a couple of seconds it refreshes automatically and you should see it disappear from your Apple home app if it doesn't all we're gonna do is just restart the service there it is so we restarted the service and the Bose switch and the TV switch has uh, disappeared from the Apple home app there we are collaboratively we have integrated the SmartThings hub with HomeKit we also seen that we can also enable and disable a switch uh, uh, based on our needs and it automatically uh, updates itself in Apple Home or sometimes you just need to restart a service for the changes to take place. Now to keep all of this going don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button that's the driver that's the motivator the more the merrier to bring all of this content. If you have any suggestions if you have any doubts don't forget to uh, put it in the comment section I'll be always happy to assist you all and uh, with this smart things hub plugin i'm also going to release uh, two more videos to integrate the uh, samsung tizen app as well as this bose uh, sound touch uh, plugin uh, with home kit um, using your preferred uh, home automation ecosystem and if you're interested to get your own hoops uh, product i've left the links in the description you can get your own all-in-one solution it also helps me uh, with the channel and not forgetting those talented developers out there who bring all of these plugins. Uh, without them, this wouldn't be possible. So kudos to all of them. So until the next time, stay safe. Have a nice day. Bye. Ciao. And a happy automation.